problem with you know some of this agenda driven stuff with everybody riding their hobby horse into you know a, a discussion of, of DNS abuse is that sometimes these things tend not to be uh, data driven and there are in addition to the SAC there's, there's a, the anti-phishing working group which I think is, is probably the has the highest esteem uh, as a collaborative effort uh, among a variety of industry uh, participants focused on a particular problem and when there is that kind of focus and there is that kind of cooperation uh, and cooperation depends upon a minimum of finger pointing among the participants um, a focused problem can get solved uh, through, through a great degree of cooperation but then it appears that people don't really uh, pay attention to the stuff that these groups put out. For example uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take a poll. How, 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 much, how, how much attention is anyone paying to the actual data? The number of domains used in phishing attacks has increased or decreased since 2008. How many say increased? Number of domains used in phishing. How many say decreased? Okay. It's actually decreased um, down to actually a fairly low, no, low number in, uh, in, in 2009 uh, of uh, several million phishing attacks used, only 28,000 domain names were involved uh, in the phishing attacks. Um, of those, uh, 6,300 were registered by the, the, the phishers. Uh, most phishing attacks using domain names, it turns out, are hacked web servers or subdirectories on, on an already existing site. You know, so coming in and saying, oh, well, you know, let's shut down this domain name at the registrar or registry level. Uh, you, you end up, you know, shutting down a legitimate, uh, a legitimate site. Um, and so, you know, unless someone's had some experience in the, in the phishing area, you know, they think, oh, well, phishing's easy. Just, you know, tell the registrar so you have to shut down a domain name when there's phishing. Uh, but it, it tends not to be that simple. Now, among, we've heard about the cyber squatters and we've heard about the fishers. Uh, and and uh, there was this report uh, from, uh, from a, uh, an ICANN participant some years ago that the cyber squatters and the and the fishers had gotten together and, and, and formed cyber squishers. Uh, these are apparently uh, cyber squatters involved in phishing. Um, now, the number of domain names used in phishing uh, containing a brand name uh, turns out to be 3.6% of, and that's 3.6% of that, uh, that 28,000 domain total. Um, and so we're talking about, you know, really, uh, a, a handful of domain names where there's overlap between cyber squatting and phishing. But every time you want to talk about, you know, phishing, which is a, a, a real-time, definite economic harm uh, that needs uh, community cooperation to shut down, you know, you'll, someone will jump in, oh, and we got to do the same thing for cyber squatting. Uh, which, you know, again, cyber squatting is not a good thing. I'm not here to defend it. Um, but it is, a, uh, it is a civil claim that's very different from an ongoing criminal act. And, and these wires get crossed between, you know, the types of network attack, you know, criminal behavior that needs to be shut down uh, very quickly, and, um, you know, civil claims and, and everybody else's favorite thing to, to complain about. Uh, you know, the, the shoes I got on eBay were the wrong color. Um, now, the very interesting thing in the uh, fishing report, which I, I highly recommend, is a, the, the, the one statistic is, is really a standout statistic on the last page. And uh, since nobody reads these things, I figured I'd just do a read to you. Uh, in the uh, in, in most of the most of the fishing activities com combined to Comnet, Org, InfoBiz, UK, CN, EU, RU. Just a, just a, a couple of top-level domains. The really standout figure here is uh, over the last few years, the both the average and median uptimes of phishing sites have gone down uh, dramatically because of the type of cooperation that the and constructive attitude that the, the anti-phishing working group has been able to put together, and the type of respect for the quality and integrity and accuracy of their research. But the standout figure here is, if you look at ComNet and Org, the median uptime for a phishing site, 17 hours, 16 hours, 17 hours, 15 hours, and, and same for all the others. Dot .info, the median uptime for a phishing
fishing site is nine hours and some change. It's about half that in the other TLDs. And that is an outstanding data point that just sticks right out and you say, well, golly gee whiz, what is going on in .info that's not going on in all the other TLDs uh, where this particular and rampant and, and really egregious form of network abuse uh, is being addressed you know, promptly. And the reason why, does anybody know the reason why? Do you know the reason why? I know the reason why, but it's not fair for me to say. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I think I know the reason why. I, I guess I know the reason why. And that is because .info, unlike every other registry, has a registry level abuse policy. And in that chain of figuring out, well, what registrar is connected to, to who and where are they and so forth, we know one thing is absolutely certain, and that is every registrar or every registry knows where the registrars are because uh, that's, you know, the other end of the money flow. And, you know, if, if you're talking about .com where there's, you know, just hundreds and hundreds of registrars and, you know, some of them uh, are, are criminals, uh, for example, um, one of the FTC actions recently was to uh, deal with the so-called free credit reports uh, that uh, Experian uh, was offering, which turned out not to be free. Uh, so one of the things Experian did was they formed their own registrar uh, in order to uh, protect uh, their domain name against uh, future FTC, uh, their domain names against future FTC actions. The other really cool thing that Experian did was to use the UDRP uh, to capture typographical variants of their own trademark free credit reports because the FTC can look at freecreditreports.com and see that the disclaimer uh, as required by the FTC action is there and so forth. What the FTC doesn't know is <laughs> that Experian now has thousands and thousands of typographically similar domain names which have been recaptured by an agent of theirs, an outfit called Citizen Hawk, where if you go to those recaptured typographic names, the required FTC disclaimer is not there, and Citizen Hawk collects a fee from Experian for, uh, for having enforced their valuable trademark rights on the internet, but it's all a criminal enterprise. Um, so, you know, some of the legal mechanisms themselves, you know, get used by, uh, by creative folks for, for those kinds of purposes.